Hello, I'm Bob Dunn, Chief of the Fullerton Police Department. And I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to a series of videos about the Chief's Advisory Council and their role in our department and our community. In this episode, I sit down with member Omar Siddiqui to discuss pressing questions from the community. Hi, my name is Omar Siddiqui, and I'm an attorney at the law firm of Siddiqui Law, and I serve as an advisor to the FBI on national security. I've had the honor and privilege to work on the Fullerton Police Chiefs Advisory Board since 2015, having served with Chief Hughes, Chief Hendricks, Chief Hennig, and now uh, Chief Dunn. It's my honor to be on the board, and I look forward to having a conversation with the Chief today. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today I'm here with Chief Advisory Council Member Omar Siddiqui. And Omar, it's my understanding you have some questions for me, so let's get into this today. Thank you for joining me, Chief. My first question is, what are we doing as a police department to bridge the divide in the community between the police and the people within the department and in the field? So um, since the, the advent of COVID here and the pandemic that we're all facing, um, it's been very challenging actually to try to continue to engage with our community and with our employees in a way that makes people feel comfortable and is effective. And so uh, the very first thing is to be completely engaged in our social media. We've undertaken a lot of efforts to put out information and make sure people know what's happening uh, with their community, with their police department through our presence on social media. We've recently reorganized the department to put a greater emphasis on that um, so that we can reach a greater audience through that where people feel more comfortable, especially during a pandemic. Um, internally, that's even been more of a challenge. When the pandemic first hit, um, we had to kind of separate our force to make sure that we had redundancy so that if we did have an outbreak, and I'm happy to say that we didn't have that happen uh, thus far during uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, we had some people working from home. Um, we've had uh, to sequester dispatch completely from the department so that we didn't have an outbreak in there. And so I think it's been challenging for people to con continue to have those relationships that we're so used to uh, being like a family, um, both internally and externally. I, I think where we've excelled is we've gotten really a lot better at leveraging technology. Um, our presence here on WebEx today is a testament to that so that we can um, hold some sort of in, uh, in person, if you will, meeting with our staff. Um, so is, there is that human contact. I know it's been said uh, we need to practice social distancing, but I think a lot of us need that social interaction. What we're really practicing is physical distancing. And so um, my direction to um, the officers, especially in the field, has been to do your best to limit the contact that you, you must have with the public as it relates to uh, the pandemic. But we've also participated in uh, over 100 drive-by uh, celebrations for birthdays and graduations from school and things of that nature. So we've still kept up our commitment to community engagement in a way that protects our employees and protects the public. And I think um, doing the best that we can during a pandemic to continue to be close to those we serve. Well, Chief, as you know, what's an important uh, issue that's facing our nation right now uh, is diversity and inclusion. And what is the Fullerton Police Department doing to ensure that diverse community members feel safe when they are interacting with member with members of the police department. So first and foremost, I think it's important to understand that our philosophy as it relates to policing here at the Fullerton Police Department is to enforce the law absent any type of bias, um, to not focus on how someone looks or where they're from but to focus on the fact that there are people in our community who need our help and to provide that help in a constitutional, empathetic, thoughtful way. And so when we deploy each and every day, that's the reinforcement that we give to our officers, that we're out there to do the best job for everyone in an inclusive way. So I think it starts first in, in how we uh, philosophically approach our job in policing. So the other important thing is to have a police department that is representative of the community that it serves. And Fullerton PD has really excelled in this area, in my opinion. Um, over the years, they've attracted and retained um, members of our community who live and work here. Um, we've also made sure that we uh, recruit those who are representative of our community from our schools and people from far and wide. And so our, our department's makeup is almost congruent with that that would be reflective in the census. So. Um, uh, 
50 or 60 percent Caucasian, 30 or 40 percent Latino, three to five percent African American, and so on. And so I find that this department. Oh, and another important thing to to I think to bring up that I am particularly proud of this organization on is we're 33 percent female and 66 percent male, and that's pretty high in the profession of policing and especially in our area. So I think there's a lot of things that we do both uh, philosophically and outwardly through action that um, emphasizes inclusion and making those that we encounter in the field every day feel comfortable with their interaction with the Fullerton Police Department and our employees. A common term we're hearing these days, Chief, is defund the police. It seems to be a hot topic right now, especially in the uh, politically ravaged environment uh, that we're facing. And a lot of people seem to have the misconception that defund the police means to abolish the police when in reality, uh, it, it means more of reallocating resources so there's less strain on the police department to respond to situations that it may be poorly equipped to handle. If we had to reallocate resources, and in your experience as, as a police chief, what does an ideal reallocation look like to you that would best support the Fullerton Police Department and the community it serves? So that's a great question. Um, I think first and foremost, I, I have to acknowledge that uh, during this time, I have participated in conversations within our community where people would support abolishing law enforcement altogether. And so I think to some in our community, defunding does in fact mean the abolishment of law enforcement. Not all, and it's not representative of everyone I've talked to, but certainly I've been involved in those conversations. As it relates to defunding for the purposes of putting greater emphasis on um, social programs or hiring experts in particular fields to help triage folks who may be experiencing homelessness or mental health, as some of the, the topics that you hear often uh, correlated with the defunding conversation, I think what I would say is, first and foremost, the conversation needs to be thoughtful. What does that look like and who does it? And, and how does that operate within the framework of our laws and what the public expectation is? Uh, our profession in policing really has, over the last 20 years or so, gone through a metamorphosis from simply being peacekeepers in the community and kind of keeping law in order to also being social workers, although there was a whole group of very qualified folks that do that as well but kind of that on the spot, middle of the night social worker trying to help people solve problems that have taken a lifetime to manifest themselves and we're supposed to try to solve that in just an instant of time. And so I am 100% committed to participating in conversations, thoughtful conversations about how we can um, better allocate resources to get to be the most effective for members of our community who need specialized assistance. Now why I say thoughtful, it's because um, for example, if you were to simply say any type of homeless related call, we're going to route to someone who's better suited to handle homeless related issues than the police department, I would say, how do we know what that call actually looks like? So if someone calls in, they call 911, for example, and our uh, communication center were to receive that call. Uh, we only know what the person's telling us. And so um, if on face value, we transfer that to somebody who is uh, in the mind of some better qualified to handle that, um, I would say fine as long as no one gets hurt. And if someone were to get hurt, what would that mean and who would be responsible? And so I think there's a lot of complexities to work through as we have the conversation. It doesn't mean we shouldn't have it. It doesn't mean that the conversation isn't valid. It just means that there is so much that law enforcement has taken on in the last two decades. and so much ability because of our 24-7, 365 uh, operation that um, we really need to be thoughtful about that approach. Now, um, I, wanna, I want to stress that we do have partnerships with experts in fields, for example, social workers. Um, that w when children have been abused and there needs to be follow-up investigation, social workers will respond to the homes, but they won't respond to the homes by themselves they want law enforcement professionals there to make sure that the scene is safe for them to do their job. And so I don't forever see us leaving the duty of responding to those types of incidents, but certainly acquiescing to the expert as they go through their investigation about that portion of the child abuse, how to best serve the child, how to best serve the family, and, and get the child into a situation where it's more safe. 
but there's also a criminal component to that. So I think, too, part of that conversation should be what kind of other partnerships can law enforcement forge with experts in particular areas to be the most effective on calls for service. And so, um, again, I certainly have committed to that conversation, but it needs to be thoughtful and, and done within the framework of our existing laws. Some argue that people have been scattered uh, since the quarantine and how the world has changed uh, since COVID-19 and that our sense of community or belonging has been significantly altered. What are some of the creative and healthy ways you as police chief are using to rebuild this sense of community and belonging here in Fullerton and throughout Orange County? So I think it starts with us internally. You know, one of the, the biggest investments I've made since I've been here is in the people. And I know Omar, you've heard me say this and many in the community who I've talked to have heard me say that. The biggest asset that this police department has is the people that work here. And so through this pandemic, and like I mentioned before, uh, folks working from home, um, it's, it's important that we let them know that we're thinking about them, keeping them motivated. Um, for, for example, if one of my employees came down with COVID-19, um, I sent them a card to let them know that we were thinking about them and check up on them and, and ensure that they had the support that they needed. Um, and so I felt, I feel like fostering that with inside the department then translates to better community within our community as our officers go out there and provide service. We've been incredibly fortunate as a police department to have various groups from uh, throughout Orange County provide to us uh, food, sometimes donuts, um, and other things. Um, one group even provided the In-N-Out truck to us to make sure that we were, uh, that they knew or that we knew that they supported us and that they wanted to, that law enforcement is supported in our, in our county. And so we've been very fortunate in that regard to have people reach out to us. What we've done, again, I think I touched on this a little bit earlier, is we've really markedly increased our social media presence. I think that's been tremendously important. A lot of us live and die by the devices that we carry with us. And we, the minute we need to know something, we're on that trying to find out the information. And we're doing our best to try to be that person in our community that provides that information accurately and effectively. Um, so that was one thing that I think we did and we've done very well of late. Um, the other thing is um, those community drive-bys I mentioned. In the beginning of this pandemic, we said no to no one. We participated in the mall, and sometimes it was two or three a day. And it resonated with me that the community was still calling us saying, hey, I know there's a pandemic, but we really want you to be present. We think it's important for my grandfather or for my child to see the police department and come by and congratulate them on their birthday or their graduation or their promotion within elementary school, whatever the, in the event was, people wanted us there. And, and more importantly, we want to be there. And so um, I've been very proud of our department and our response to that. I've also been very proud that in those, in those moments when we're doing that, whether we're in the back lot waiting for our food that people have provided for us, we're doing it in a way that recognizes that we are in a pandemic and that we have a responsibility to provide service to the community. And so we're not putting ourselves in danger. We're physically distant. Uh, the food is taken back to their work areas where their, uh, the, the individual works and it's consumed there. So there's not lingering and, and violating kind of those, those tenets of the pandemic to, to be as safe as possible. And the same when we're out in the field and encountering the public as it relates to those events I talked about, we're doing so in a mindful way. And so um, I guess it's striking the balance between responsible response to a pandemic and the responsibility of being a police department and serving our community despite a pandemic going on. Chief, at the FBI, one of our major initiatives is diversity and inclusion. And one major project that I've been working on with former FBI Director James Comey and current director Christopher Ray is making sure that the FBI has a very strong and diverse work environment in a team. Translating that to the Fullerton Police Department, how does the racial makeup of the Fullerton Police compare with the racial makeup of the community? And do you think that racial makeup of the police force should be comparable to that of the community? 
And if so, is there a disparity between the two? And what is the police department doing to recruit minority officers? So um, as you're well aware, and, and it's a, probably a good time to remind folks that the census is going on right now as we're recording this. And so um, I think uh, we're, we'll be on the verge of getting new numbers about uh, what is representative of our community as far as diversity goes. Um, as I touched on previously, um, I do believe that Fullerton has gone a long way um, in making sure that it has a department both in our sworn and non-sworn ranks that's representative of the community that it serves. And, and I'm often asked, why is that important? And I think you're, you're alluding to that too in your question, Omar, is that when we encounter members of the public of a specific uh, ethnicity or uh, religious belief, that oftentimes they feel comfortable uh, talking to someone who uh, understands them or has the same experiences as them. Um, and that's important sometimes to break down barriers to get to the heart of the issues that we're trying to solve. Um, but I'd also, uh, I, I would encourage people to understand that we're an empathetic department who, despite who's responding to your call, our officers should approach that with empathy and understand that we are a diverse community and we're serving a diverse community here in Fullerton. Um, as far as our recruiting efforts, we, uh, we have a, a website for our recruiting. You can go to fullertonpd.org and it will link you there. Um, it will show you kind of a cross section of members of this department who have volunteered to go out and find members of our community and beyond who are representative of those we're looking for. And we're looking for folks who are from Fullerton, specifically if we can, um, but who represent the diverse backgrounds that are throughout our community. Um, prior to the pandemic, we were attending uh, a host of recruitment events all over, um, especially in our military, which is of course very diverse. Um, we also participate uh, in our schools because we, we all know that our city is a destination uh, for students and those students are from diverse backgrounds in other countries and so we try to um, recruit them to come and be a part of our department both in our non sworn and non-sworn ranks. And I keep mentioning that I think it's important to to point out that really there's two facets to every police department. There's the sworn officers who go out and handle 911 calls and emergencies. And then there's a whole other side of the department that's staffed by civilian professional staff that can be your career. And so although we're always looking for qualified police officers to join our department, we're also looking for people to be our dispatchers and our crime scene investigators. And so um, our the way that we approach our community as far as recruiting goes needs to be in a way that connects with them. And connections often come in the form of mutual understanding based on where you're from or how you believe. But it isn't what defines how we do our job, if that makes any sense. Because we have to have an understanding, and, but we can't let it influence how we do our job. And so I think we do a very good job at striking that balance. I think, um, if, if, and I mentioned it before and I'll go over it again, um, we're about 50% Caucasian, we're about 30 to 35 percent Latino, 3 percent African American, and then uh, the list goes on from there. And so we uh, are a department, I think, especially in Orange County, that has excelled in being representative of the community that we're serving. And I'm looking forward to uh, future endeavors as it relates to getting more members of our Fullerton community, our very diverse Fullerton community, to join our department. Chief, I have a surprise question for you. And this is an observation that I've had having been on the uh, police chief's advisory board with the Fullerton Police Department for several years. Uh, I have had the honor and privilege of working with several chiefs, but there's one quality that I've seen in you that really separates you out from the others. And I wanna ask you about that. We met the other day uh, working on a particular assignment. And as I was driving back, uh, I noticed a, a lady that was stuck in the middle of the road. And uh, by the time I circled around to try to help her out, I found that you had seen her too. And you, as police chief, got out of your car and were directing traffic. You very easily could have called another officer or called someone else to do it. But you, as the chief, got down in the trenches to do it yourself. And the very example I was citing to you is when we were uh, meeting with this business owner about some safety concerns, you could have easily set, sent out somebody else, but you decided to come yourself personally. And that's very unique, something that I haven't seen for quite some time at the Fullerton Police Department. You're a people's chief for, a, for a lack of better terms. If you can talk to us a little bit about 
um, what drives you uh, to do that? What drives you to serve as a, as a, as a people's chief? I think, um, oh, thanks for noticing. Um, I think for me, it goes back to why I joined the profession of policing. I joined the profession of policing uh, to truly help people. And I, when I joined the, the Anaheim Police Department when I was younger, and even coming over here to Fullerton, uh, my only goal really was to ever work patrol. That was the what lured me to law enforcement, was the patrol job. Never had any aspirations to do anything else. And through happenstance and other things, I've ended up where I ended up. And so I think, uh, to answer that question, I, it's kind of twofold. One, the higher up you get in an organization, the less close to the work that you started doing when you started the profession you are. And sometimes you long to do that again. And so um, I always find myself longing to do that kind of work on occasion. Uh, I, it's difficult work, especially when it's 113 degrees outside and you're driving around, and you have to get out of your car, you're wearing a bulletproof vest and 23 pounds worth of gear. It's very difficult. So there are days when I'm thankful that I don't have to do it anymore but you do long for that. Um, the other part of it is, I'm a big believer in Sir Robert Peel, and for those who don't know who Sir Robert Peel is, he was the person that started the Metropolitan Police Force in London. The reason they're named Bobbies is after him because his name was Robert Peel. And he came up with tenants for policing. They were police reform bills and that he put forth. And one of the most important ones for me is the police are the people and the people are the police. And, and that tenant is way longer and I'm just uh, summarizing it for you. And, and that's kind of how I approach my job every day, whether I'm serving the internal uh, customers, the employees here, I'm one of them and they're me. And when I go out into the community, I feel like I'm a police officer and I'm part of the community and I want to in make people understand that I'm here for them. Uh, the other thing that it allows me to do and, and where I find that friction points often come with a police department and the community is in um, expectations. You know, over the years, the laws of our state have changed and things that people are used to being illegal sometimes aren't illegal anymore or the degree of illegality has been diminished. W whether you believe in that or not, that's not the purpose of the conversation. The purpose of the conversation is to say there are people in our community who still expect us to the outcome to be like it once would have been. And the simple fact is it can't be that way anymore. And so I often find that if I'm present and I kind of offer what we're able to do, people um, will listen, one, because I'm the chief of police, but two, because I'm the authority on the matter for our community. And then I can go back to my staff and say, I went out there, I looked at it myself, some of the things I noticed are this, and then you can take the torch from here. And so. Um, I feel like I want to be a part of the problem solving. I know that I can't always do it and that a lot of my work needs to be done in here. Um, but at the same time, um, I'm still a police officer and I'm still a member of this community and I want to make sure that people feel connected to me because I truly do work for them. And so uh, I really think that those are kind of where they're rooted from. Uh, and I appreciate you noticing it's not something that uh, uh, I kind of flaunt, it's just something that I do. I also think that this department uh, has responded very well to uh, my type of leadership, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I've been able to really get close to people that work here, and, and they've welcomed me into the family that has been Fullerton PD, and I, I, I appreciate that very much. And so that kind of also, from the inside, drives me to be kind of their ambassador to the community. So I'm representative of what I see in the people that work here every single day, and I want people to see that as well. Well, thank you very much, Chief. I have to say on behalf of myself as being a part of your advisory board, uh, being a resident of Fullerton and working with uh, the FBI and the law enforcement community, I know it's uh, not an easy job and uh, you've done very well uh, in serving our community. And I wanna take the time to thank you and all, our men, and all the men and women uh, at the Fullerton Police Department for the hard work uh, that you put in uh, 24 seven. Thanks again, Chief, for your time. And Omar, I wanna thank you for your dedication to the Chief's Advisory Council, for being a very active member of our community and specifically in your neighborhood. And uh, I look forward and thank uh, you very much for your continued friendship. As Chief of Police, it's my hope that you found this series highlighting the members of our Chief's Advisory Committee helpful and informative. If you'd like further information on how to contact members of the Chief's Advisory Committee, please visit www.fullertonpd.org and click on the About Us tab to learn more information.